So today we're going to talk about some of the core principles that you need to be familiar with if you're trying to build AI tools, AI applications, AI agents, regardless of whether you're using like a no code solution such as Defy or Make, or even if you're trying something more code oriented like Crew AI or Agency Swarm. So if you're a beginner in this space, the AI space, and you're trying to make tools on your own and you kind of just feel like maybe it's a little bit overwhelming or you constantly get stuck, I do want to cover some of these recurring topics that you're going to be seeing regardless of the approach that you're taking to make these AI tools. So again, super high level explanations. This isn't supposed to be a technical lecture. So for this one, we're going to be going over variables, large language models, tokens, prompting and passing context. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's say, you know, you maybe didn't want to go with a coding solution for the tools that you were building or the AI application that you wanted to make. So you went with a no coding solution, right? You chose something like Defy, which again, in the videos, it looks awesome. They have all these tutorials and I think it is a super flexible app, but then you open one of your workflows or one of the templates and you kind of like start questioning if that was a good idea or not. And maybe you're already starting to feel a little bit lost or even a little bit overwhelmed. So let's just start right here. Super basic. Let's start with with the start module or the start block right here. And we see all these little icons here. We see this X from algebra. And I mean, what are we doing, right? We already took algebra in junior high. We don't want to deal with this. And you see this box over here to the right. It has these little different parts. So what do we do with this information? So that's what we're going to go over variables, right? All a variable is, again, this is related to programming. You've seen it before. If you've programmed even just a little bit, but all a variable is, is a label for something else. And the simplest way I can think of explaining this is think about your refrigerator and all the different jars you have in there. Maybe you have a peanut butter jar. Maybe you have a strawberry jelly jar. Or maybe you're just one of those very unique people that has something like pickled eggs in a jar. Now, in that scenario where you have multiple jars with different contents, you wouldn't want to put the same label in the jars because, again, each jar individually has its own set of unique contents. And in that same manner, that's what these very variables or labels represent. Here you just have one called input text. As you can see over here, you have another one called multi sentiment and you have another one categories, but that doesn't really mean anything here. You could call it name and save that right there. When you click save, now your variable name is just called name. And same thing with the rest of these, right? You could call them whatever you want, because again, they're just labels and just like the jar in your refrigerator, which is meant to store contents in that same manner, your variables for your workflows here are meant to store information. Now, what kind of information is it going to store, right? If we click the edit button here, we see here that the field type is short text. All that means is that for this variable or label called name, we're going to store some form of short text. And you can verify that by clicking run here. This is the test run for your project. And as you can see here, where it says, please input this, is where you're going to type the text, that text is going to be stored in the variable called name. Because remember the information that is given from you to the application needs to be saved in order to be passed on to the next step. But again, that's all variables are just labels to store data. So now let's talk a little bit about large language models. Now I know you keep hearing this buzzword. It's all over the news, AI, Nvidia, this and that, but let's get a very simple explanation for what a large language model is and what it actually does. Now a large language model can't do mathematics. A large language model, can't browse the internet. And in fact, there's a lot more things that a large language model cannot do. So rather than thinking about it as this very scary, robotic, taking over the world kind of thing, think of it more as a very complicated mathematical formula. That's really oversimplifying it, but bear with me on this. Just like a mathematical formula, which if you give it a number, you're going to get an answer as output, which is another number. In a similar manner, you're going to give a large language model your input, which is some words, and the output just as well is going to be some more words. Now, the reason why I say guessing is because whenever you get a mathematical formula, it doesn't matter how many times you give it that one number, you're always going to get the same response. Whereas with a large language model, you could give it the same prompt or you could ask it the same question over and over again. And at different times, you're probably going to get a different answer. And also if you're using different models, maybe you're using Claude or ChatGPT or Gemini, you're also going to get a very different response. And this has more to do with the way that the model was trained. And I know that's another buzz where you're going to keep hearing the training of the model, all the parameters and this and that. But to take it back another step in simplicity, when they see language training, think of it this way. Let's say you and I are having a conversation and I'm trying to train you in certain aspects of the English language. So when I just start saying some sentences to you, right? I say the cat is red. I say the cat is brown. And then after that, I ask you, okay, for the next sentence, I say, you don't know what that sentence is. 
I want you to fill out the rest of the sentence. And then for that sentence, I tell you the cat is, and then you say black. Now it seems pretty likely that that would be your response because of the previous training that I gave you was really just a lot of words associated within that same area of what we were talking about. But you know, if we spend a little bit more time talking and I maintain that same pattern of the conversation, I might ask you again, the cat is, and you might respond blue. And again, your response is gonna be based on the training of the data that I gave you. And that's probably the best example I could think of giving you for large language models. They're just very complicated mathematical formulas that instead of giving you responses, in accurate and exact numbers, they're giving you estimations in letters, or rather words in the English language. So then there's this other word I'm sure you keep hearing, right? You keep hearing about tokens, tokenization, token limits, token this, token that. So whenever you ask ChatGPT anything, that sentence that you write down for ChatGPT to process has to be broken down. It has to be broken down either in different sentences, has to be broken down in separate words. And also you need to keep into account the spaces, the comma, the punctuation. So basically that sentence needs to be broken down into smaller pieces. And then from here, those smaller pieces are giving a numerical label and that numerical value that the different parts of the sentence, the words, the letters are given are what's known as a token. Because remember, back to the previous thing we we're talking about for LLMs, even though we get a response in letters, there's still a lot of math going on behind the scenes. And just like any mathematical calculation, any form of computational processing, there's gonna be limits to the amount of data that can be processed at any given time. So now let's talk a little bit about prompting. Now prompting, I'm sure that's one of the first things you heard since so you started working with AI and you signed up for your ChatGPT account, but what does that actually mean? Because again, if AI is so good and so advanced and so smart and progressing so quickly, shouldn't just kind of like know what we want to know when we ask it. Well, like we were talking earlier, a large language model doesn't inherently know anything. All a large language model is doing is giving you a response based on input. So in a sense, what a prompt is, is the guidance and directions that you're providing the model with your input in order to try and get quality output. Now, depending on what applications you've used before, maybe you notice that some give you way better output than others. And the ones that are giving you the best output is probably because there's already a system prompt built into the background meant to start guiding the LLM in the right direction. Because even for this pre-made template workflow, which is just supposed to be sentiment analysis, you can already see here that this prompt is pretty lengthy, pretty detailed. I'll read through it real quick just to kind of give you a sense of it. But here you see that it says you're a tech sentiment analysis model, analyze tech sentiment, categorize, extract positive and negative keywords. And then if you read farther at the bottom, you get this very important part of it, which says format the output as JSON, only return a JSON response with no other comment or context. If you can return any other text in JSON, you will have failed. Because again, the more detail you give it, the more elements you're giving the large language model for things it needs to take into consideration when producing the output it's gonna give you. So another way you might wanna think about it is, think of an LLM or a chatbot kind of as a new employee. Again, the better directions you can give this employee, the clearer you can define their job description, their day-to-day -day duties, and the more resources you can provide for them, then it's more likely that they're gonna do a good job. Now, if you give them kind of a generic description of what their job duties are, what they should or shouldn't do, well, you know, they're probably more likely to fail because they won't really understand what the expectation is. So now we're gonna talk about passing context. Now, let's say you're already good at prompting, you've been using ChatGPT and all these tools for a long time, but you constantly find that even though you're getting pretty good at writing prompts, you're also constantly just copying and pasting information from a big data set, or maybe you have this customer information sheet. And even though you are using AI, it's to some extent becoming quite tedious and quite repetitive. Well, this is where you can leverage passing context. Now, if we look here at our LLM, we have this context area right here. If we click the little question mark, it says you can import knowledge as context. So when you pass something as context to an LLM, I guess the way that I can put it is that you are drawing attention to a certain part of the conversation before the conversation even starts. And the example that I can give you is, let's say you're at a party, maybe some kind of social event, and you see that a group of friends, they're kind of gathering over there, talking, laughing, this and that. And as soon as you step into the group, you hear the punchline to a joke and everybody starts laughing. But because you walked into a part of the conversation where it was just a punchline, you didn't laugh because you didn't really understand the joke because you didn't hear the joke. Because you didn't have enough context in the previous part of the conversation, well, you just didn't find the joke funny and by consequence, you didn't laugh. So that same manner, if you want to pass information to your LLM or context so you don't have to be constantly copying and pasting or rewriting the whole thing, you could do something like knowledge retrieval here then here at the right, you would click add, you would go to create, 
And here you get the option to sync. And here you get the option to input information from a file. Let's say it's just a customer profile or even a data source like Notion. But like I said, all context is, is giving the LLM a better idea of the things that it needs to pay attention to as it carries out the request in your prompt. I hope that you guys found these explanations helpful. And if you still have some questions or there's still some areas that you feel like you're stuck and maybe you would like for me to cover a little better, I'm going to leave a link in the description where you can book a one-on-one -on -one call with me for free. And I'll be happy to give you more guidance on how you can traverse this world of AI a little bit more effectively. I get it. AI has all the hype. There's all these different tools, all these different technologies. And even though there are better no coding tools, I think to some extent, it's still important to learn software engineering principles, basics of programming, just so you can get a better grasp on tools like this a little bit faster and you can just get started on making the things you want quicker. Let me know in the comments what areas you feel like you're still having trouble with, what areas you feel like you're getting stuck in, because at the end of the day, it's your questions and feedback that help me make better content. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.